Hi, my name is Rohan Thomas, and I'm a senior product manager with Amazon S3. Today, I'm looking forward to talking to you about how to use Amazon S3 batch operations. In this video, I'll provide a, provide a guided tour of Amazon S3 batch operations, a feature designed to perform large-scale operations across tens to billions of objects in Amazon S3. We'll see how it works and show you how to set up permissions, create a job, and how to manage and track a job all in the AWS Management Console. With that, let's dive in. First, let's explain what Amazon S3 batch operations does. As your data footprint expands, you'll find it increasingly valuable to make changes across many objects at once, especially if you store exabytes of data or billions of objects. That's why customers rely on Amazon S3 batch operations, a feature which makes it simple for customers to manage tens to billions of S3 objects with just a few clicks in the S3 management console or a single API request. With S3 batch operations, you can add scale modify object metadata and object properties, such as replicate or copy objects be between S3 buckets, replace object tag sets, modify access controls to sensitive data, restore archive objects from Glacier Flexible Retrieval and Glacier Deep Archive, as well as invoking AWS Lambda functions across all of your S3 objects. The great thing about S3 batch operations is it eliminates the need to spend months building and maintaining an application that calls APIs across a set of target objects. To get started, all you have to do is create a list of objects you wanna modify or take action against. You can do this easily by using an S3 inventory report or creating your own list of target objects. Then select your desired operation from our pre-populated menu in the S3 Management Console. Once you've created your job, you can use the console or the S3 APIs to view progress and prioritize your jobs. When your job is complete, you'll review a notification and a completion report that lists all the changes made to your S3 objects. Let's start by looking at setting up permissions for S3 batch operations. In this segment, we'll be looking at the steps required to create an AWS identity and access management role. And this defines the set of permissions you pass to Amazon S3 batch operations in order to perform a requested job. For this demo, we'll be operating in the AWS IAM console. To get started, we'll select roles and then we'll click on the batch operations role that we're dealing with. I'm gonna show you how to modify an existing role, but the same steps could be used to create a new role. F first, let's look at the permission policy that we have already. When we open it up, we can see that it's already populated with uh, the bucket that we're using. But all you have to do is actually copy and paste from the Amazon S3 batch operations documentation. We can refer to the documentation page for granting permissions for, M for Amazon S3 batch operations. You can just copy and paste the JSON specified for replacing object tags. And then all you have to do once you use that JSON is you would have to replace the manifest location as well as the completion report location. In our case, all of the buckets are the same, but you may want to choose and specify different buckets for your manifest and related completion reports. Just inspecting the JSON, the first section gives access to tagging the objects. The next gives us the ability to read the manifest. And lastly, this gives permission to write the completion reports. After doing this, we can save the changes and move back to the role creation. The next step is the trust relationship. This is what allows Amazon S3 batch operations to assume the role and perform the action specified. Once again, to create this, we have to refer to the documentation. You can just straight copy and paste the trust policy and save it for your AWS IAM role. Now let's look at creating a job. In this segment, we'll create an Amazon S3 batch operations job. And this job will tag objects in an Amazon S3 bucket. We'll start by selecting a manifest, which is the list of objects, and then we'll specify the parameters for this particular job. So let's get started. First, we'll start in the Amazon S3 Management Console. 
to select an Amazon S3 inventory report as the manifest for our job. An Amazon S3 inventory report lists all objects in a given bucket or prefix, making it a very good fit for creating a job that acts on your existing storage. An inventory list contains a list of objects in the source bucket and metadata for each object. Objects are sorted in ascended, ascending order based on the key names. We start by selecting our bucket, and then we select the management tab. And finally, we scroll down to the Amazon S3 inventory feature. There we see my existing configuration and can select create job from manifest. And this starts creating our job. That takes us to the job creation workflow in Amazon S3 batch operations with the latest Amazon S3 inventory report selected as our manifest. Here we verified the region for our job and this will be the destination region for copy operations and the region where our objects are stored for all other types of operations. We then verified that the manifest we selected for the job is correct. Of note, we have a few options for the manifest. The first option is using an S3 inventory report like we are. The second is providing a manifest in CSV format. And lastly, in the special case of S3 batch replication, we can have S3 batch operations generate a manifest for us using the under, underlying S3 replication configuration. Now we scroll to the bottom and we click next. Here we can see the type of operation that we want to perform. We're gonna select replace all object tags. And now we're going to actually put the key value pair for our tags. I'm gonna put a value of project and, sorry, key of, key of project and the value of archive. And this is what we're gonna be using to later go on and create a lifecycle policy to later archive our objects uh, within our bucket. After doing this, we're gonna click next. At this step, we can give our job a description to help identify and search for it among other jobs. Since we're doing project archive, I'm gonna add that to the description of our project. Next, we can prioritize this job above or below others. This capability is specifically designed to let you control what jobs are active at any time and which ones to pause if a higher priority job needs to run. Please note that a higher value here indicates a higher priority. For now, we'll just leave this job at priority 10. In this next step, we will specify that we want a completion report. It's actually already selected generate completion report. But I'm actually gonna just select that I want to fail tasks only. And this, this option helps me to identify and correct any issues that prevented tagging my objects. I'll then go and specify where I want this stored. So I'll browse my location and select the bucket where I want the completion report stored. Now we need to specify the AWS IAM role for Amazon S3 batch operations, the one it should assume to perform this operation. This includes the permission to read the manifest, tag the objects, and write the completion report to my bucket. If you haven't yet created an AWS IAM role for this job, there is guidance available when you click the drop down which is titled View IAM Role Policy Template and IAM Trust Policy. Earlier in this video, I walked through the steps on setting up permissions for Amazon S3 batch operations. So since I already have a role, I'm not gonna create one right now. I'm actually gonna go and search for the one I already created and use that. Lastly, I have the option to tag the, the job for organization purposes. I'm now going to proceed without a job tag and move on to the next step by clicking next. Here I verify all the parameters are as intended. And then finally I scroll to the bottom and cl click create job. Now as our final segment, let's move on to managing and tracking a job. In this segment, we'll be exploring the actions you can perform on your jobs once they are created. These include changing a job's priority, confirming a job, cloning a job, canceling a job, and lastly, tracking a job. So let's get started. First, let's look in the Amazon S3 Management Console. 
We'll be going to the Amazon S3 batch operations tab to see a generated list of jobs. Here we see a list of our jobs 100 at a time, which can be filtered by their job state, region, and other parameters. Let's start by looking at all of our active jobs. So we do that by selecting the, the dropdown that is currently labeled as all status types, and we're gonna click in progress. And here we can see all of the jobs that are running and the progress that is made. And we can see that all of these job priorities are at 10. Next, we're gonna go, go look at the jobs that have not yet started. And we're gonna do that by changing the in progress dropdown to not start it. So we can see that there are some jobs that are in the ready state, as well as some that are preparing and some that are waiting for confirmation. The jobs that are in the ready state are waiting for an active job to finish running before they can activate. If we want to prioritize some jobs over, over others, I can change the order so the important ones act sooner. With all the active jobs at priority 10, I'll change one of the jobs to priority 12. If I do that by selecting the job and I'm gonna click actions and I'm later gonna click update, update priority. So here I have the current priority at 10. I'm gonna update it to 12 and click update priority. We can see that that job has now moved um, away and now it is getting into the ready state. Among the jobs that are not yet running, you can see that some are in the waiting confirmation. These jobs are awaiting user action before they can run. Please note that all jobs created through the Amazon S3 Management Console automatically move to this state. However, for jobs created through the AWS SDKs or CLI, this job state is configurable. As well as when you use S3 Batch Replication, you have the option to run your job automatically without waiting for confirmation. To confirm a job, what we have to do is we have to go and select a job and then uh, click run job. We scroll to the bottom and click run job once again, and the job is confirmed. To copy the parameters from one job to another, you can clone a job in the S3 management console. This action pre-populates all the job creation fields with the details from the other job. You, this can be extremely useful when the jobs are very similar and only the manifest or the operation needs to be modified or to retry a job after the error was corrected. So to do that, you would click select an existing job and click clone job. Next, you can cancel a job if it is no longer required or if you need to change any of the parameters of the job. If the manifest operation details or other parameters of a job need to be altered, you need to create a new job. The only exception to this is changing a job's priority. If a par partially completed job is canceled, any work that has been completed remains and does not roll back. So to cancel, you would just click actions and then click cancel job. With S3 batch operations, you can view and update job status, add notifications and logging, track job failures and generate completion reports. In the console, we can see current job statuses, as well as percentages for the percent completed, as well as total failed rate. When using the SDK and CLI, you can use the Describe Job API to retrieve the configuration parameters and status for a batch operations job. While a job is active, the Describe Job API monitors its progress similar to the S3 Management Console. In addition, you can also capture, review, and audit batch operations activity using AWS CloudTrail. Because batch operations use existing Amazon S3 APIs to perform tasks, those tasks also emit the same events that they would if you called them directly. Thus, you can track and record the progress of your job and all of its tasks using the same notification, logging, auditing, auditing tools, and processes that you already use with Amazon S3. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out Amazon S3 Batch Operations feature page for more information on S3 Batch Operations.